Hey guys, welcome to this Bank OZK update video. Now for those who are not familiar, I would encourage you to first watch the overview video that we had done some time back on Bank OZK. It's a very well-run business that has been compounding over the last couple of decades at a very high rate. And we have provided the link to the overview video in the description section of this video. So I would recommend watch that first and then this update would make sense. Now, you can also go and register for free on moneywisemart.com slash research and there you'll get the entire research report along with the overview video. And you'll also get to see the other research videos that we have done for many other companies. Now, as usual, this is not a recommendation. This is purely for discussion purpose. The COVID-19 pandemic has, of course, affected businesses across the board and OZK is no exception. Several loans had to be deferred, but there's a very interesting thing that we got to learn from George Gleason, the CEO, that in a way, these loan deferments actually have helped OZK. Watch on to learn exactly how that is. Now, OZK implemented the current expected credit losses, which is the CECL method to calculate their total allowance for credit losses. Now, they did a stress test, which is actually much more stringent than the usual Moody's allowance framework. And they did this because they felt the velocity of the deterioration in the economy during this pandemic was much more severe than what the Moody's framework took into consideration. So this resulted in a provision for credit losses of almost 118 million, which is over 27 times their actual net charge-offs of 4.29 million. In the real estate specialties group, OZK typically mitigates their risk by one, working with the best sponsors, by lending against the best quality assets and entering into the best deal structures. Now, OZK deals with the most sophisticated of the sponsors who have the capability of doing such large projects. So these sponsors typically build in their contingencies in their project plans and OZK's expertise and capabilities ensure that these sophisticated sponsors call on them for these type of projects. So this is where OZK has a huge lead over all the competitors. Moreover, the real estate assets which OZK lends against, they're typically the state-of-the-art projects. And even OZK's deal structures are very advantageous. The bigger the project, the lower is their loan to value and the loan to cost. And we have, we have seen earlier that OZK's LTV typically hovers around the 40% range. So there's a lot of cushion that's built into these big loans. Now, of course, there have been some requests for adjustments because of this uh, pandemic that has come from sponsors. And OZK has been handling them in a very judicious manner. There has been a noticeable pullback from competition and one reason being uh, fewer banks or the other lenders are actually capable of doing the kind of projects that OZK participates in. And this has significantly narrowed down their competitive field. Also, they are seeing a pullback from competitors who did not have good lending norms like OZK has and many of these competitors have been lending indiscriminately. So they of course have got waylaid and this has helped in enhancing the yield as well as a much better LTV or LTC for OZK. Uh, there have been some discussions during the earnings call regarding the hotel portfolio and uh, you know there have been some speculation that uh, there might be some risk in the hotel portfolio because if the hotel owners just uh, who have borrowed from OZK, if they just hand over the keys to OZK, that can be a significant risk. Now, to this, 
George responded that most of the sponsors in the hotel business who have borrowed from OZK, they are veteran operators. And they are well aware that there is a significant amount of volatility involved in the business. They have operated their business through 9-11, through recessions, through floods, hurricanes, etc. So the OZK team feels very confident that these operators will be able to tide over this pattern. And interestingly, OZK's portfolio is more diversified than ever. While some of the individual loans look very large in absolute terms, as a percentage of total capital, they are actually better diversified now than what they were in uh, 2008, 2009 during the GFC. Now, at that point of time, they had a number of loans which were almost at the maximum legal loan limit, just within a couple of percentage points within that limit. Now, OZK has always done large loans compared to the total capital. But George mentioned that in the four decades of he being the CEO, they have never been as diversified as they are now. So they feel very comfortable with the current situation. Now, there have been some questions whether the RESG business has structurally changed because it's a fact that uh, during the pandemic or immediately after the pandemic, the need for physical real estate is going to shrink. And uh, in the commercial real estate cycles, there are periods when there is more need for real estate space and there are periods when there is less need. Now, of course, immediately after the pandemic, there will be a period when the need for physical real estate space will, will shrink. But then depending upon the economic recovery, there will definitely be a time when that need will come back. And there's another factor which we have to keep in mind that commercial real estate gets obsolete and it needs to be replaced. Replaced with new products, with better looks, better features, better amenities. And for a construction lender like OZK, the sponsors typically build products that are always the newest, the freshest, and the best in the market. They're the most desirable real estate properties. So once the cycle turns, it's quite natural that these are the properties which will be in high demand. Now, in case of permanent lenders offering takeout financing, they typically face the problems of products becoming obsolete and less desirable. A good example is the shopping center in South Carolina where OZK was the lender and that was a takeout financing. In other words, it's a, it's a permanent loan. And the property literally became functionally obsolete. So that has been a, a problematic loan on OZK's books. But in case of the construction loans, the risk is actually lower. And many new players who have been following OZK and who got into the lending business, the RESG lending business, they realize that it's actually not as easy as OZK made it look. Now, George explained that the environment is actually quite good for the RESG lending group. And this is contrary to what many people might be speculating. Now, this is something which I referred to right at the beginning of the video. But typically what happens is, in case of construction loans, the leverage is a lot less and the rates are a lot better as compared to the, the long-term loans or the takeout financing. Now, we have been hearing George Gleason complain over the last couple of years about the velocity of repayment because when there are a lot of repayments happening very fast, that's actually not good for OZK because their yield on the loans, that gets compromised. Now, what has happened during this pandemic is, is that many of the loans, the payments have got deferred. Now, this is actually a good thing for, because number one, these loans offer a much higher return, a higher yield, and the leverage is a lot less compared to the takeout financing loans. So the 
Permanent lenders typically offer 1.5 to 2 times leverage and they charge much lower interest. So it's actually an OZK's advantage if the low leverage and high return loans stay on their books slightly longer. That actually over time enhances their income. So if the secondary market is disrupted for a couple of years and if the loans stay on the books longer, OZK is actually fine with that. Now for the loan deferrals, OZK does not do any outbound calling. They have been responding to customer inquiries and they, they only entertain the legitimate reasons like loss of jobs or when businesses had to close down. So, so those are the only cases that OZK has been agreeing to defer. And they are actually seeing a fair bit of opportunistic ways of deploying more capital. A lot of RESG business is actually coming their way and offering better pricing just because many of the competitors got waylaid. Now, in case of the RV and marine business, only about 3.7% in dollar terms of the loan portfolio has had deferral requests. And based on the data from peer banks, OZK's deferral rates are a lot lower than what the peer banks are experiencing. So they're very comfortable here. Now the loan pipeline has been very good going into Q2. And they are of course expecting quite a bit of prepayments towards the end of the year as some of the competitors would eventually get their bearings right and again enter the market. Now, you know, we have explained this in our previous video that most of OZK's loans are variable interest loans, but there is a floor for each of those loans. So as the interest rates keep dropping, the loans hit their flows. And this picture shows that of the total funded balance, as of 31st of March, 53% of the loans were currently at, at their flows. And out of the total commitment, 65% of the loans were at their flows. Now, the important point to note here is that two thirds of the RESG loans are monthly adjustable as opposed to daily adjustable. So several loans were not at their flows as of 31st of March, but would have hit the floor on 1st of April when the monthly adjustments would have taken place. And as the interest rates uh, drop, this picture shows the percentage of the loans which will eventually hit the floor. So once a loan is at the floor, the situation doesn't worsen anymore. And then it's just a question of the deposit rates catching up with the lower interest rates. Now, coming to the deposits, OZK works with several deposit gathering entities and they recently replaced two of the deposit generating entities. The objective was to even out the concentration more than the cost considerations. So right now, the 10 largest depositors add up to less than 10% of the total deposits as compared to a year and a half back when uh, the top 10 depositors added to high teen percentage of the deposits. So they have diversified the deposit sources much more and they have also added to the duration and the stability of the deposit base. So there also the situation is much more comfortable as compared to a couple of years back. And as the interest rates come down, the deposit rates also come down, but there is a phase lag because they need to wait for the existing deposits to mature. So this picture shows the maturity schedule of the deposits and we can see that as the quarters progress there will be significant opportunity of reducing the deposit rates as the maturing deposits are renewed at a lower rate so the full benefit of the rate cuts have not yet been fully reflected in the q1 numbers and we can expect the deposit costs to come down for the remaining part of the year that is if the rates stay where they are now, OZK also parks a fair bit of their capital in their investment portfolio and 
they have taken advantage of some short-term opportunities. So they got to deploy some 700 to 800 million dollars in two separate categories of assets. One was these money market funds who were liquidating their assets and there were some bonds that should have been trading for 20 to 30 basis points of uh, yield. OZK managed to buy them for a 5 to 6 percent yield, which is fantastic. And these were actually short term bonds. And they also picked up $400 million of really short term AA and AAA uh, munis, which are maturing just a few months from now to a couple of years. And these are backed by US Treasury securities. And these typically trades at around 1% yield, but OZK bought them at a discount, uh, enjoying 2 to 4% yield. So that's again, fantastic deal that they have done. And these are highly liquid, pledgeable at all sorts of different places for advances. So some great opportunities they took advantage of. And as we know, OZK has always been a great capital allocator. Uh, now they rank among the highest tier one capital ratios among the largest US banks. They were one of the highest as of 31st March 2020 and they were the highest as of December 2019. And this is among the top 100 banks. Now OZK has been increasing their dividends every single year since going public and every single of the last 39 quarters. And uh, the, the board feels very comfortable that they should be able to meet their dividend obligations and uh, even an increase in the uh, dividend. So this is based on their uh, core earnings and the current capital level, uh, which they feel that uh, it should definitely be able to support the current dividend and uh, even an increase on it. So this is our team. I'm Rupam and this is Pan Liang, my partner who lives in Melbourne. I'm based in Singapore. And uh, we invite you to join our Facebook group. The link is provided here and also in the description section below. We discuss a lot of interesting businesses and we do deep dive research into these businesses. And if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and uh, do subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for your time.